opportunity to go dumpster diving. And you'll probably get more emails, so please, please do that. Uh, next is Maxwell with a presentation on O to octopodes, cephalopods, and me. thing to an alien on Earth. To me, the octopus comes to mind. It has eight tentacles that are full of tactile and sensitive suckers. It can disperse ink into the water to cloud the vision of a would-be predator. And it can precisely match the colors of the sea floor and has the best camouflage ability of any animal. But what's even more alien about the octopus is despite these radical physical differences from what we normally consider intelligent, the human. The octopodes have a remarkable ability of intelligence. Now, computer scientists, who are human, have always <laughs> posited that human intelligence would be the best origin for artificial intelligence. And they're like mostly right. <laughs> I hope to convince you that we can draw some inspiration from my favorite cephalopod mollusk, the octopus. <laughs> The human neural network is heavily centralized, and it's a top-down system. Almost all of the computing power is in our brains. Whereas, with the octopus, it's a distributed system. In fact, their central brain only has about a third of their neurons. The other two-thirds run throughout the eight tentacles and are concentrated on and around the suckers, which, as I said, are highly sensitive. The result of this is that all of the computing power of the octopus's neural system is on the same level as the sensory input. Now, how's that different? The human nose cannot process olfactory data. The eardrum can't process sound waves. We have to send electrical impulses all the way to our heads. The octopus doesn't have to do that. The sucker, which can taste, feel, and sense light, can do all of the data processing at the same place where the input happens. Now, the effect of this is that each tentacle and each sucker, for that matter, is to a certain extent a semi-autonomous part of the octopus itself. There is no center. Now, because it's a sensory-heavy animal, it is ready to learn, to explore its environment, and figure out how to survive. In fact, it has to, because octopodes abandon their children at birth. So, <laughs> so they have no choice but to use their immense sensory powers to learn about their environment. Now, octopodes in aquariums have exhibited some fascinating behavior that give us some insight into their intelligence. An octopus, when it's meeting a human, will latch onto it with its suckers and taste the human. And then, it will decide what to do. Some octopodes will squirt gallons of water at the human and have been known to hold grudges for years against the same human. They've learned to complete puzzles and open containers in minutes what would take a human child hours to figure out. One 600-pound octopus learned how to plug the drain of its tank to have it overflow so that it could escape out the top, creep across the floor, and escape into the ocean through a hole the size of a quarter. An octopus has no bones, so it can squeeze through any hole that's bigger than its beak, which is usually about one inch wide. It also has a remarkable ability to camouflage, despite the fact that an octopus cannot see color. Now, how is this possible? The octopus neurons can sense the light, and so all the processing required to change the reflections of light in an individual cell is done by the neurons that receive the light. This is an advantage of having a decentralized system, because they don't have to send any information to the central brain to pull off this magnificent feat. Octopodes in the wild has also also been known to use tools, something we traditionally associate with humans. Now, I'm not predicting that an octopus startup is going to radically change the future of Silicon Valley. <laughs> but, and, the and the reason is, is because human intelligence is still undoubtedly better. An octopus is not going to acquire language ability or advance critical faculties or sentience. But the octopus gained intelligence with only 500 million neurons is about half a percent of Homo sapiens' 86 billion. So, is it possible to make an AI that requires only half a percent of the current computing power? Probably not, but 400 to 600 million years of evolution seems to indicate that it's possible. Now, you may have noticed that I said octopodes a few times, and yes, it is my favorite word. 
<laughs> and I've written a poem about why octopodes is the correct pluralization. <laughs> One day I took a seaside walk and had a revelation. Not one of God or faith and such, but erroneous pluralization. <laughs> it started when I heard a sound. I thought it was a ringing. But then I looked out seaward, and an octopus was singing. <laughs> and as the cephalopod sweet symphony let my mind fall into bliss, I dreamt of whence this creature came. A deep and dark abyss. <laughs> but the question of octopus pluralization broke off my feeling of deep contemplation. And as the mollusk sang its song, I asked myself, had I been wrong? <laughs> had I been under a misapprehension that the word was in Latin in second declension? In fact, it was Greek with no Latin in it. I'd been wrong all this time, now I had to admit it. <laughs> this fraudulent, contemptible Latinization zoologically screwed up the pluralization. <laughs> I fell to the ground. I'd been wrong. I'd been wrong. <laughs> but I rose up again, and I rose up in song. Yes. Which was not a cry or lullaby for my dear friends the octopi. Not opuses nor choruses sung for the many <coughs> octopuses. <laughs> no, this was of a different sort. One much more a la mode. It was, now come to think of it, an ode to octopodes. <laughs> question of pronunciation, I'll just say that the word rhymes with Socrates, but for poetic purposes such as my own, I prefer octopodes to octopodes. Oh, yay! Yay!